Hi there, and welcome to the Concept 101 podcast. My name is Daniel, Stefan, and Jules. We are three concept artists currently working in the film and games industry, as well as the organizers of the Concept 101 event in London. In today's episode, we'll be mainly discussing work culture. Now, just as a little preface to this, uh, I think it's important to kind of talk about what we define work culture as in this specific conversation. Um, So I think what we mean by this today is not so much to do with like the work culture in offices necessarily or the general work culture in the industry, but the culture of how much you should work when you're in the industry. Um, So, you know, when you're a student, how many hours you should be putting in every day to get the job. And even when you have a job, how many hours you need to be putting in to develop as an artist and to actually improve. Uh, So to start off with, I think it's, you know, good to ask, like, what do you guys think is the work culture in the concept art industry? You know, how how many, how do you feel about it? Because should we talk about like how it was or how it is now? I think we can talk about how it was for us. I'm sure it's probably the same because we're just like slightly disconnected from it now. Um, But we're talking about when we, we, so Stefan's, I think about to talk about his experience of work culture when he was a student. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So when I was starting out, um, there wasn't much. I mean, I, I was always quite uh, hard working, I think. So I, every time someone told me that you should work harder, I'll be like, oh, okay, I'm going to work harder. That's the obvious thing I should do. Right. Uh, and then they would be like, well, but you don't work hard enough. So you work harder. Right. So, okay. So I will do more hours. And, um, there were some it was difficult to know like how how much you should be putting on like putting in hours and how 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 difficult it is to learn a skill and i think from the social media that was around at the time specifically youtube videos and some some of the very few information that was floating around it seemed like you know you need to work like non-stop like you should be draw if you are not drawing 11 hours a day there's someone else drawing 11 hours a day. And in fact, if you are drawing 11 hours a day, there's someone drawing 14 hours a day. Yeah. And then if you if you are not drawing 14 hours a day and someone is, then and you are only doing 11 hours, then over a week, that person has extra 16 or let's say over seven days, he has extra 28 hours on you. And eventually over you know a month that like multiplies and then this person is so ahead of you that you'll never catch up and you'll be the, you'll be the shittiest artist in the world. I feel like I'm watching <laughs> PTSD happen yeah. live. Yeah. So uh, so that was a. Uh, by the way, context. You were in a concept art university. Yeah, that's true. That is people, important. Context, surrounded by yeah. people that were also trying also to, be wanting to be concept art, yeah. which is a job which is known to be hard to get. Yeah where people expect you to work a shit ton. Yeah, but I mean, so everyone... It, it was this yeah. middle thing I mean, where everyone it, probably, was, it probably pushed you... No, everyone you was know. lazy as shit in that uni. Except... Oh, my God. <laughs> except, except, except... I think, I think... Except you, burn, few, except you few can people, notice... Except you, few people who totally <laughs> burn themselves out. I feel like you're really burning... I'm. Oh, my... You're just really burning bridges like three minutes into the episode. And you're like... Oh, Lord. All right. Um, well, I don't even know where to go from No, no, no. no. <laughs> just just as, a, as, as, a, as a trend that happens in each episode, Stefan makes enemies. Uh, <laughs> you're the villain. All right, look, I'm, I'm sorry to whoever I insulted uh, by saying this. I mean... Uh, I think what I... At the end of the day... Yeah, do you want to give a more calm, calm version of events? I think, it's, I think what I meant to say <laughs> is... Uh, that is so funny. <laughs> I think what I meant to say was that you need to work at least a certain amount of hours uh-huh. to get a certain skill level unless you're a very very talented person um and not to like bash on people oh my God. <laughs> in any university there are some people who work more and then some people who work less i just feel like art is one of those things yeah that is true that is true I well, art is one of those yeah. things where uh Sometimes you can get away with at the beginning with working less and still getting similar results. Um, so, yeah, we go back to what we were talking about. <laughs> I Me and Jules are just laughing. I'm sorry. I've just got the giggles now. Oh All my right. god. So <laughs> we were talking about like the the work culture, and I think. <laughs> Wait, I need. To, let me talk for a bit so I can calm down. Wait. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, when I was at university, I had a very similar experience to Stefan, where I think we were both kind of raised by YouTube when we were becoming concept artists. And um, 
you know, I think at the time, probably even now, there was a lot of conversation about, yeah, working a really close amount of hours. And like Stefan said, if you're working four hours a day, somebody else is working eight and over mm-hmm. a week, mm-hmm. they're working, I, I can't do math, but more hours than you. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, that was like a really big, driving thing for both of us is probably actually part of the reason why we became friends because i think even when we met that was probably one of the first things we spoke about was how many hours do you work every day (laughs) you know i think that literally was something we said to each other yeah seriously the first time we met because that was like so much of a thing it was like a badge of honor like oh i yeah yeah Yeah. yeah. i think it probably still is it's it's, it's funny because i i never really was focusing on an amount of work i should work yeah although there was clearly this thing where y- you need to work a shit ton. It's like it's like if you want to succeed, you need to put the hours. I think it's interesting because that probably came from the fact that uh, un- maybe for whatever reason you had more access to information in some certain ways. Because for me, I never actually met a single concept artist mm. until I was 21, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, which was, or maybe I was like just about to turn 21, Mm -hmm. which is crazy because I started working when I was 22. Do you know what I mean? So... uh, What do you mean at events? You met people, no? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the first time I went to an event was at uh, just when I was about to turn 21, I think, or like when I was 20. Damn. Somewhere between that. It was in 2019, because it would have been when we met, right? Was that 2019? Crazy. So, So I went from... So I got hired in 2021. So I literally went from, uh, and you know, we can, I guess we can talk about something like this in a future episode, but like I went from like non-professional to professional in like two years yeah, because of like certain people I've met and mm-hmm. stuff. But yeah, that was partially, I was partially driven yeah. by that work culture. And what was interesting was um, I was working probably nearly the same amount of hours before I even knew what I was doing because I was still listening to concept art, like YouTube and stuff. And hearing these people being like, yeah, you need to work 18 hours a day. And I was doing it. But because I had no like actual idea of what to do, you know, it was that thing of like, I was working very hard, but not very smart. And yeah. so I, I never got anywhere. And it, it wasn't mm-hmm. until I went to that event and I met people like Stefan and other people that I actually started improving in like a serious way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, just just to, again, the, the, work, the work culture uh, is definitely aimed to be like oh you have to work really hard and therefore you're gonna get better um and i think over time it has gotten it's like a different slightly different mindset um where it's you know you have to also take into consideration your mental health and those kind of things uh, but i definitely think that wasn't as much of a case yeah and definitely wasn't the, on my radar at all when i was in uni totally. I, I did not even i didn't even consider like the, the word like mental health on that note <laughs> at all would you be willing to tell us some of just the absolutely awful stories of what you decided to do during university actually let me preface this with some of the stuff that i did at university because yeah, this is I like wanna, we yeah, can like we can we can like it. uh go yeah. up the um we can ramp it up you know from mm. like least psychopathic which is jules to most psychopathic stefan me in the middle i think <laughs> all of us worked pretty hard yeah, but I yeah. think I like we all have like I, yeah. less and less healthy ways of doing Probably, it. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like I mean how many how many I, hours did you work then as a student, do you think? So I um so I was studying a 3D 3D art, right? Um yeah. pipeline for VFX and stuff like this. So I was very trying hard to as soon as I can link to whatever I was doing at uni to mm-hmm. to concept art. And also I was trying hard to have good grades at uni, right? Which yeah. stuff we were, which were also not linked to concept art. Yeah. So, I was, I, I consider my, I think I was working probably much harder than most of the people at uni. Yeah. But probably much, much harder. And as soon as it came to concept art, yeah, this is where it just was going off limits. I think I was just, I could work like hours and hours and hours and hours without really, mm-hmm. because since it, my passion and something I like, which I think is also, something quite imp- an important part of this conversation is yeah. that it's not just working it's also what we like to do for during our time right so it's become very hard to separate what is what is work what's an obligation and and what you do for fun and what you do yeah. 
for like learning purposes yeah. and for like career purposes. It's like it's all blending in, in a mess. And so yeah, doing uni, I think as soon as it was concept art related, I could easily, I, I think, I'm, I'm, I can easily sink days and nights eat on a project without. Like, I have no problem focusing on something and I'll focus on it for like eight hours without a break. I would forget to eat mm-hmm. and shit like this. Yeah. I'm fine with it. And it, not, not if at all. Uh, so I I think the way I would work is I would work so much during a short period of time, mm-hmm. a few weeks, but like work hardcore and then I would be lazy for another few weeks. Mm. Also because at uni, you're kind of focusing on the uni tasks. Yeah. And yeah especially sure. when it's not linked to concept art. Like sometimes I was, I wouldn't do much concepts for like a month or two, which mm-hmm. was... Not good, but I would do other stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, animation projects, modeling, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, and that w- that was me at uni. I think I was working probably much more than most people. Yeah. Because I had this, co- but probably only because of the concept art part. Right. right. Um, but I wouldn't do any. Yeah. yeah, because also because that's my dream, right? I want I want to I want to reach it, and but I wasn't. I clearly wasn't doing it in a clever way. <laughs> like I, could, I could have followed courses for that. I could have, I could have looked informations where I should have taken them. I, I, it's almost like I was shooting and like throwing a ball or like whatever in I the mean, dark, yeah. whooping for someone to throw it back to me or like for knowledge to appear, where I should have really had like some sort of plan. That was very consistent with me because I mean, but the thing is, it's really difficult to plan when you don't. Yeah, you, you know, just don't know. You don't know. Yeah, as the, as we said in a previous podcast, there's just no, there's no path to concept art. It's just. Like no, the, I think there are. Yeah, but there's no there's no main path. It's I, just I, random. We, we should, at some point we should talk about. I have a. I have a. I, it would be cool to talk about like, is it good if you just follow a certain path, or if you have like a random, yeah, random way you get to it? Because I feel like sometimes when people get to some like concept art in a random way, mm-hmm. they become in a way more unique. They have more yeah. unique portfolios. Uh, I, I think that rather uh, rather than like, you know, oh, that guy, he did a Tanzana course and then he did Jama Jurabayev's course yeah. and it all looks like that kind of work rather than someone like, oh, yeah, this guy did absolutely random shit, yeah. but it's cool ideas, I <laughs> guess. And eventually when they put it together, they have like, you have this new person, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I was, so when I was at university, I, you know, you're saying mm-hmm. like, you worked hard. I can tell you for sure pretty much every day I was probably working between 12 and 14 hours and that would include university work as well so like I that's so why I would include that in my so I would be at university for like I don't know six hours in a day or something I would go back and then I would often work for another eight hours at home like straight and then I would go to sleep and I wake up and do it again and on the days where I didn't have a university I would just do like 14 hours straight of concept art which I want to say before I like contribute to the problem it's not a particularly smart way to do things. Mm-hmm. It's always like if you, uh, you know, I think as well, something important that like me and Jules were talking about before this podcast was that it's different strokes for different people, right? If a lot of people uh, took on like, you know, for example, my scheduling of like how much I like to work, they would might cry. Other people, however, might love it. Mm-hmm. And that's just to do with like how your brain works. Like yeah. for me, Personally speaking, I really don't mind working very long hours as long as it's like a, a blend of different stuff. So I like doing work and my own personal work. It's, it's almost like, you know, a, a runner can run many kilometers and it's going to be fine. If I run many kilometers, I'm just going to die. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's similar. It's just people have different uh, different speeds. ways. And also, yeah. it's, it's, it's not a good or a bad thing. I think just, you know, like I'm pretty sure someone that works in a clever way and works only a few hours per day. And works in, works properly, right? Can get to to X yeah, points which is way faster. Something than, so consistent yeah. that I've seen throughout my career is that loads of people that I know who are brilliant artists do not work the same amount of hours as me, but they get just as good results. And uh, you know that's that's cool. I wish I could do that. Just for me, that's not how my brain works. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when we're talking about the work culture, my work culture was like fourteen hour days, and it was like you know sad. It's sad to say, it was genuinely like a point of pride for me. Where like like I said, when me and Stefan first met, we spoke about that. That was mm-hmm. like a conversation point. It was like, how many hours a day do you work? Yeah, I do fourteen hours. Yeah. Whatever. And you know, I don't necessarily regret some of the things that you know you necessarily sacrifice doing stuff like that because I still had like plenty of fun at university and I have lots of great friends from there. But um, you know, I think 
I probably could have taken a little bit more relaxed and enjoyed myself a little bit more rather than just like driving myself to the brink of sanity constantly. I remember when I was on my foundation and this was before I'd even met a concept artist. So I really had no idea what I was doing. I did you know you wanted to do concept art? Yeah, because I'd seen it on YouTube and I liked it, but I didn't quite understand <laughs> like what it was, if Crazy. that makes sense. But um, it's I... funny how the, yeah, you know, it is, that's what we're saying. There's no, there's no proper path. It's like people just find different ways. Yeah, but I think the the similarity in everyone's path is that they're like, oh, I really improved once I met a concept artist, especially in Europe. You know yeah, I mean? true. In America, it's very different because they have way more access to this stuff, I think, than we do. But um, most most European artists are self taught. You know, that's the other thing. But um, uh, what was I gonna say? I, like when I was at university, I did my foundation. I had I was working like 14 hours a day. I was blowing off all of my friends all the time. And honestly, I had like the biggest burnout of my life ever. Right at the end of that course, I remember finishing my project for university and then also trying to finish something for like um, a, a, a concept art, I don't know, project and literally just like breaking down on my desk and crying. And that is that is a reality of like when you work those hours because like it's something that you have to adjust to as well uh like i didn't just start off being able to work 14 hours in a row or whatever if i want to and you know what now i, I probably wouldn't choose to work 14 hours in a row because i think it's a bit silly <laughs> but yeah you know i i adjusted to it and like one of those adjustments was that i had a lot of breakdowns across my student experience because of the hours i was working and because i wasn't giving myself proper rest um yeah so it's that, never it's never good when that happens yeah so that's like the limits of like how bad it got for me and now mm. it's stefan yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now so, to the sky no, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so i think in general uh i also agree so i definitely agree that you know your schedule should be however it's comfortable for you uh and you know whenever you want to achieve a certain goal you should be able to assess of whether you are achieving it by the what is the amount of hours? What is the approach that you are taking to solve this problem to get better? Um, I think in, even like, so I heard about, yeah, that I have to work hard. And my parents were very, very strict parents. I always worked hard. I And I was very used to doing things without like liking. Like I would, I did, I was a really good student, but I would say I was quite, wasn't the smartest kid. And I just worked my way through until I was do, getting the best grades, competing, like going to like competitions if I could, uh, just because I worked really, really hard, even if I didn't enjoy it. And I took the same approach to concept art where I was like, yeah, concept art sounds cool and looks cool. Uh, but even though it's, uh, you know, I didn't really question, like I just started to draw. And I wasn't like, oh yeah, this is amazing. I love drawing. I was just like, yeah, this is kind of cool. I kind of suck at it. I can get better. <laughs> so I'm just going to get better. And rather than focusing on the aspect of like, what do I enjoy about concept art and how do I enjoy it? I just totally focused on like, how do I get better? How do I get better? It's only about getting better. It's not about how I feel about it. Like I, and I think this is what caused like at the end of my uni, like eventually what, what happened is like, Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, so <laughs> so basically, I would say I was maybe working even less than 14 hours, usually like a day, I would say maybe uh, like 11 hours or something. I would say, I don't uh, think I was more. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. yeah hours, man. <laughs> I was not, because I would. I that's, would yeah. that's a weekend for them. I think I would wake up at like seven or something, and then I would like start drawing, uh, have breakfast, start drawing, uh, and then I would go to the gym at six, and then I would come back home and do another two hours or something like that until like 11 ish, 12. And then mm -hmm. I'll go to, to sleep. Uh, and that was every day almost. Uh, well, it was definitely every day. And uh, there was like no days off. There wasn't like, there was another part of the thing, like days off, no days off. What are you talking about? <laughs> I remember, I remember I had this stupid quote where I was like, I solved, I was like, I solved the problem where you look forward to Friday. I was like, there never is Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Because there never is any weekend. And I feel I was, like your like your university is like the starting point from a villain in a movie. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> slowly. But, but Stefan ended up as a good guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But imagine if you did, you ended up never getting a job, you would definitely be a villain by now. <laughs> no, I think so. Basically, <laughs> I had my uh, my friend Alex, and we eventually. I so I worked really hard, 
And to be honest, he, uh, oh my gosh, this guy, he used to do insane amount of, like, he probably actually must have, he's a very weird person, similar to when you said, Jules, that he can work a lot in, a, like, two months and then have an insane, just, just can't do any more work type of situation. Uh, so he, uh, and also in first year, like, this guy worked so much, it was intense. So I tried to, like, catch up and eventually... Uh, Basically, as I finished, as I was finishing uni, and that's around the time me and Daniel met, and we met, uh, we went to like a little uh, meeting with Ahmed Aldori. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I had helped Ahmed organize a little meetup where we all did like a draw along, which was nice, which is where Stefan did one of his most unhinged things of all time, for sure. Yeah, so I, I, I was, we were sitting there and... Um, well, I always thought it was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Daniel was a good person to tell this story. because You're was, trapped now. Yeah, you have trapped. to say it. Just he, so you understand how, like, unhealthy I was thinking about this stuff. Yeah. Like, in concept art and how much you should work. I mean, the thing was I had met Stefan, uh, you know, prior to this, like, two days before. And this was, like, a meetup that was held after con the convention that we had met at. And we got along great. You even came over and we cooked pancakes with Tom and stuff. Oh, yeah. And we tried out your VR headset. It was the first time I ever used VR. It was really like oh, wholesome wow. time. How long ago was that? It was like two years. Yeah, yeah two, two, two years. No, it was more than two, two years. Two years only. No, no, was, no three, was, three years now, maybe. Yeah, because we know each other for two years. Yeah. yeah I've been working in Sharkwell for two years. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so that was, uh, it was a lovely time. And um, towards the end of the evening, all these people came over and uh, we were drawing with Med and sketching and talking. It was a really great time. It was lovely. And everybody kind of like was sitting around, we we're listening to music and people started asking uh, Med questions. You know, he's a brilliant artist, definitely the kind of person you'd want to be asking questions to. And Stefan, in one of the most like defining moments of his character, where I was like, oh, I get this guy now. You you went over to him and you were like, hey, Med, I have a question for you. And he was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I'll do an, I do an American accent. But <laughs> maybe not. Um, <laughs> here we go. Californian kind of chill accent. Mm. But um. He was like, oh, yeah, man, what's up? What, what do you want to ask? And uh, you said something along the lines of, okay, so I'm going to brainstorm with my three friends, okay? And I was thinking, to get the most out of the experience, uh, we're going to go there, and we're just going to draw, and we're going to work, like, 15 hours a day, and I'm not going to work out, because, like, I work out, but I don't want to work out anymore, because that would cut into my time of sleeping and working. And rather than eating, I think I'll just buy like mashed potato powder and I'll just eat mashed potato powder with gravy and some protein shakes. Do you think that'll be okay? Do you think that'll be good? Because I think that'll really optimize my learning. And there was like dead silence in the room. And Med just looked at him and he went, what? Dude, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was quite a, yeah, I feel like that was kind of when you started to turn around almost yeah, yeah. from so when I knew you, yeah. So I, uh, I really, I meant that, by the way, like I was going to do it. And mm -hmm. I eventually, so eventually what happened is that pandemic happened and we couldn't go to brainstorm. And we actually, thanks fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, because, uh, no, well, what happened is. No, much worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It was, so I didn't, we couldn't go to brainstorm and me, me and Alex were like. Well, this sucks. Like, how are you true? Because now you're locked together now. Yeah, yeah. We, we're like, how can we? How can we still get this brainstorm experience? We still want to like try to work really hard, and you know, as you know, the harder you work, the better you get. Yeah, right? obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a, it's a, it's a cur It's, it's not even a curve. It's just a straight line. Exactly. More work, better. Yeah, exactly. more work, better. So, rest, rest, not needed. Yeah. So we created this idea of a schedule, and it was based on the military schedule where we hold each other responsible, and we had certain punishment system. <laughs> That's already a bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a certain punishment system of like, if you, if one of us uh, doesn't hit their goal, so we would write some some of the goals. And if you don't hit the goals exactly, so like you say, I'm going to do 150 like paintings. If you don't do 150 paintings, then you didn't hit the goals. You have to do a punishment. And the punishment where you had to write punishments that were obviously sensible, but something that you really were scared of. So for example, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going with the story. So uh, we... What are the punishments? Uh, so one of the the safer work ones. Yeah, no, so so so, so, so the puni one of the punishments that we had to do at the end, which was the one that I was very very uh, scared of, was when uh, you had to wake up at three in the morning and just start working. Oh my god! But but, but that's insane because but, like, and, you to, and you had to go to bed at eleven and you had to do this for a week. And it's, what, it's, it's like run faster, but when you don't reach your speed, you have to break a toe. Yeah, it's like almost yeah. this thing. And this is like just, it's like voluntary Guantanamo. 
Yeah, it, where you're like sleep depriving yeah, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we we do this and we did insane amount of work. So the idea was like, you know, was like how hard can we work? Uh, can you just wake out of the bed, run downstairs? Like I mean, you you don't stay on your phone. You get out of the bed, and the next four minutes you're already drawing. Like that was the that was how we how we did stuff. So. And the, the way we tested it, the way this started was like we started doing like one hour. You know, you can do color studies. Yeah. So we started, but the first the, the thing that eased us into it was like I doing color it. studies. I we, remember we you start, posting that. We started to do like back to back color studies. So for like five hours, I would do a color study and he would do color study at the same time. And they would post like these five color studies that within those five hours, there was, and we'd be like, who is better, right? And eventually we we're like, okay, so how many can we do in like one week? So. I so I did I was my goal that that week the first week where we tried it was to do eight color studies um every day one hour they're all one hour so there it's that's one hour of non-stop work and also I was I had to do them based off of James Gurney's book so I was reading through James Gurney's book learning from it and doing eight hour color studies which Alex's equivalent to that was 11 color stu studies so and i did the same amount of work as he did so basically it was like 11 hours of non-stop work if you've d d you're so tired after those 11 hours of because oh you're so so tired after those 11 hours of non-stop work that oh man you sleep like a baby like you you just like you close your eyes and yeah you just fall asleep but it was quite intense because you would get out of the bed. I mean, the first next 10 minutes, I remember sitting down already on the stairs, reading James Gurney book, and you're you're just in this constant stress of, okay, I need to do college study. And there's no break, another college study, another college study, another college study. And you just keep going, keep going, keep going. You keep pushing. And we did this for the first week and we completed it. So in the in the, in the the first first week was six days. Then we had one day break because I was amazed Alex's. you lasted six days, no, honestly. But then we continued working on it. So like for six days, and then Alex had a break because it was his birthday on the seventh day, something like that. But in the six days we did, uh, I think it was 77 or something like that. Um, no one told you to stop. <laughs> no, no, crazy. No. Can I just say as well, right? Because I remember talking with with people about this at the time. But we were, we were all in, like in a house. Yeah, yeah, true. Because we were all looking at what you were doing because you were posting on Discord, and we were like, "These guys are actually insane." And I remember looking at the color studies you're doing, just because I want to add like a kind of non disclaimer about like why you shouldn't do this. They progressively got worse, yeah. and you just weren't learning from them. Yeah, yeah. just like. Getting yeah. it out for yeah. the sake of getting it out. Like Stefan was like, he you were like getting rid of demons, not trying to improve at paintings at that point. Yeah. You know what so I mean? yeah, and uh, so we did it, and then we kept having our goals, and we we kept the same intensity, not doing college studies anymore, but just doing like we finished uni, we finished all our uni assignments a week in a week because we did just so much work <laughs> uh, in the in the in the amount of hours, but it was all shit. Like it all. It was all bad. And you know what? Looking back at it, I remember one of them was like, you have to do a painting a day. And, you know, I was like, I can do that now. Still quite difficult. But back then they were so shit, you know. So we kept going for, I think we did it for five or six weeks like this. That long? Yeah. Really? So it was Jeez. eventually one what, of what us. What ended it? Yes. Yeah, so one of us eventually slipped. And this, and just, just so you understand, this is how slipped. mental it was. What, couldn't do the thing. And one of the one of the goals was that we have to finish at 11 straight. And if you don't finish at 11 exact, then you get the punishment, right? And I did like extra one minute and I knew that I did it. But, you know, like when you know, you can reflect like, yeah, man, I, I didn't want to tell him initially that I didn't, uh, that, that I did it. And eventually, was, oh, man, you know what? I, I did work a little bit longer. <laughs> So wait for one minute. Yeah. One minute. So we did. So we decided. Okay, it's time to do the punishment. So the next. <laughs> oh, oh God. So, so, so I took the rock. <laughs> so I didn't. So I remember walking down from step because Alex was sleeping in the bottom floor and telling him like, "Look, dude, um, I don't think we can do this. Like, I cannot. I cannot wake up at three in the morning, you know." And he was like, oh, "No, let's just fucking do it." So I almost, almost at the very beginning stage, I almost like was like. Uh, okay, let's not do it. And we did it. 
So the first night I didn't sleep. I and the idea is that once you don't have the once you wake up at three in the morning, you have to start working again, and you cannot take naps. So this was first. I did forty eight hours without any sleep, kept working. Oh my god! And this was the first time I have I ever felt like what it feels like when you must be like just on drugs, because <laughs> so I, I don't I never taken drugs, but. Um, I was just like yeah, the time sleep, was time sleep was, deprivation. Time was going so sleep deprivation is wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did that many times. Yeah, that, yeah. Like after I've never done an all nighter ever. Really? No. Oh, I was doing them all the time. <laughs> so I, I all guess the you time. Had, uh... But I was working so fucking well. Learn yeah. to be efficient. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was efficient when I needed to be, and sleeping was a side project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna finish you. Up. Um. No. So, yeah, yeah. As I said, I never. Never experienced anything like that, but I imagine that's what you would like take drugs, uh, you know, outside of paracetamol. I would imagine that's what that is. Is uh, outside of paracetamol. Uh, <laughs> Such is, a hardcore uh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> is um, the time slows down or goes really fast, or slows down or goes really fast. This was very weird, uh, but yeah. So we pushed through it. We did it for I think uh, a few days, and eventually we got, it was so ridiculous that we couldn't, like, I remember we couldn't do the things we would, like, listen to. We would have motivational videos in the last two hours, three hours of doing this, shouting at each other, like, we can do this. And <laughs> and uh, and uh, just, like, listening to them, trying to say, the, like, say the same things in the motivational videos. And then, then there was this moment where Alex just looks at me and he goes, dude, I could just be, like, a professional swimmer. <laughs> like like what we are doing with our lives this is insane like we are not enjoying it what are we doing and oh i thought you were saying he had like broken his brain and he was like i can be a professional I can swimmer. Be anything <laughs> I want. i'm no. special I can no fly. but what he, what he meant what he meant is like we are we forgot jumped from the window we forgot oh, we forgot that you are supposed to enjoy it and that's yeah, that's when no no but that's when it dawned on me that i didn't enjoy any of like in terms of like trying to do stuff that i enjoy for the whole three years of uni, I did not like look into in the enjoyment of anything yeah. that I did, mm. and I, mean, I just like I you broke. I broke, yourself. Yeah, I broke down. Yeah, I broke down at the at the at the same spot. Like, how could I like do this to myself? How could I just like, um, yeah? It was very like difficult. Um, yeah. So I mean, understandably, you you like essentially worked yourself into a frenzy over three years, and like. I mean, honestly, I remember seeing you not so long afterwards and the difference in like even just the way that you held yourself was so much better because you had mentally improved so much, yeah. you know? I mean, it, it was, was it was a big like improvement after that. So after that, I, I like went away and I took like a break um, and I started the Ricardo Lima course actually. And uh, as Daniel said, like during the, all those six weeks, actually I made almost no improvement in art. And I took Ricardo's course and I first time told myself, okay, what do I enjoy? I said, I enjoy keyframes. I know it sounds weird because I don't have as much keyframes, uh, but I was like, I enjoy keyframes and um, I'm going to do that. So for the first time I had a mentor, I knew what I was doing and I was excited about the work that I was doing. And I still have amazing like memories of doing that course and like having so much fun. And that's when I have learned that I think the missing ingredient, because I couldn't figure out outside of like, why am I not improving? And I think one of the missing ingredients was, of course, having a mentor, but also some, someone who knows what they're doing, but just enjoying the stuff that you're doing, just having fun, because the more fun you have, the more stuff you can do mm -hmm. that you enjoy. And rather than like focusing on like, oh, I have to work hard, you go like, Am I having fun? Yeah, I'm having fun. Let's do more, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. I think it's that classic thing of how far certain types of motivation take you. Mm. I mean, it's like, you know, I think um, I joked in the previous episode that, like, you know, somebody had told me, like, oh, yeah, you'll never be in the film industry. And I was like, and that spite to me so far. But, you know, things like spite, things like just wanting to work hard for the sake of working hard you know essentially like negative emotions they just can't take you that far it's a very mm. short journey that you, they'll bring you on like i wonder how much better i would be if i realized this earlier if i asked myself what do i enjoy why do i enjoy it and just focused on having fun 
But I think that's kind of a silly thing to think about because you know you're you are a great artist and you've ended up Thank where you, you are. Yeah. And there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. nothing to regret, so to speak. Like it's a part of your life, and you also, know, like I'm, I'm pretty it's sure your, your mental got way stronger. Yeah. Like, thanks to that. No, no psychic will yeah. ever be able to penetrate <laughs> your mind. <laughs> <laughs> also, well, like you know, like just knowing your limits. Like this is yeah. this is a hard, very hardcore way to discover it. Yeah. I mean, now I think you know your limits pretty well. And like I, and like you you also know how much you can do and I and think you, finding, and you also know if it's beneficial or not to do it. Finding your limits in like aspects totally. of life is yeah. very yeah. important because it's when you're like really at the edge of stuff. And it's not something you should be doing every day. It's not something you should be doing for six weeks. But it's that thing of like, yeah, when you're like right on the edge of like being so tired from running that you feel like you can't take another step forward and you choose to keep going that's when you know your limit. Do you know what I mean? There's like the comfortable limit and then there's your actual limit. Just, and it, it's and, not because you can do it that you should do it. Yeah. Like, you know. You definitely, I feel like I've learned, I have to say that if I've, because I used, I was used to like kind of pushing myself, right? Yeah. But if I never pushed myself to that extreme mm. Alex, who knows? Maybe I would have never changed. Well, that's what Maybe I'm I would have never I'm... gone on like understanding that I need to enjoy this. My mom could say, I remember afterwards having a conversation with her and she yeah. was saying like, yeah, I could feel it. I could yeah. feel that you were not enjoying it, but I couldn't tell you like you were not listening to anyone. And that's how I was. I just, if you, unless you feel it and experience it for yourself. So in a way, I am grateful that I did do that extreme of a schedule because I got to learn mm. about myself and change. And that, that's a trap because it's something that's, you know, I'm pretty sure you didn't realize you were not enjoying because it was almost a default setting that you enjoy doing this because you've always enjoyed doing this your whole life. Yeah. So it, sometimes you just don't realize that, oh shit, that changed, you know, because concept art is such a cool thing for many people, including us, I think, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. that it's like, even when you, don't, when you enjoy it, or like, you know, even if you, you're like, shit, I'm so lucky to be doing this, or I'm so lucky to have the time to practice this I should really go for it because that's my dream and because it's so hard to get there and it's very easy to just go hardcore with it and and just go too far yeah I think it's just important that to keep asking yourself okay but if I if keep asking yourself am I enjoying this and if the answer is no even if you go like yes yeah, it's okay to push through things and stuff like that but asking yourself, oh, am I enjoying this? No. Then ask yourself, why? Is there anything that I could be doing to get more enjoyment out of this personal work that I'm doing? Oh, maybe I need to change the technique. Maybe I need to talk with, about it with someone. But just doing those few things makes you go back and be like, take a deep breath and be like, okay, yes, I can care about myself and let's have fun. Yeah. You know? I think my personal take is that if you don't enjoy it, stop it don't do it i mean except if it's if except if it's like a clear reason why i will like I will. like you know i don't necessarily like perspective drawing it but if i know it's going to make me better for something and it's a choice that i do it for, okay fair enough but if i do a personal project and i i don't enjoy it just stop it there's no point well, there's i no think reason. there's like i would push back a tiny bit on that like there's with all as with all things in life there, there's limits and you know like with times when it's good to push past mm. your comfort zone again like if you're doing a personal project and you don't like it, 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 there's different reasons why you might like it. If you don't like it because you can't achieve the look you're going for, right? Where you're mm. like, oh, this isn't good enough. Then I would say, well, you should probably push through and try and figure it out. And, you know, realize yes, and work towards making it better to the quality standard you want to make it towards. If the reason you're not enjoying it is because you're like, I hate this subject matter, right? Maybe you need it for your portfolio, you know, but like you're not necessarily learning so much from doing that i guess from like forcing yourself to do subject matter you don't like it's a very case-by-case -case basis but yeah there are definitely things you mm -hmm. need to push through as with everything in life you know perspective is a brilliant example it's something that so many artists um especially in europe because we're all self-taught here mainly no, maybe less now because of like new edge and focal mm -hmm. point but perspective is something that a lot of people completely resist because 3d exists and uh, they use that instead and they they never learn perspective, but perspective is like an essential thing to learn. And the reason people don't learn it is because it's not that fun to learn. Yeah. Once you know it, it's great. You know, mm -hmm. like I have no problem sketching in perspective now. But um, that and you know, even if I, I would say say this, like I'm I'm not perfect at doing perspective drawings. If I wanted to improve, it would be painful again, yeah. probably. There also there's this thing where art being a physical skill. Mm. It's also mental. You know, a big big chunk of physical, similar to a sport. There's always going to be someone better than you. 
and you're never going to reach the top level. I mean, you know, no matter how, also, you ne- so you're never going to stop learning yeah. your whole life and you're always going to have someone better than you. I would, I would say one thing that I think is like quite harmful in the industry is the idea that like, I think I'm sure there's something that me and Stefan were like very obsessed over is like, you hear about like somebody who got into the top company at like 18 and being like, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to yeah, do yeah. it by the time I'm 21. And, um, you know, I meet so many students and stuff and they'll say things like, oh, I'm doing this and I'm only 18 or I'm only 19. And I would just, I'll just be like, it doesn't matter how old you are, mm. you know? At the end of the day, something you have to realize, I think as an adult, <laughs> is that different people have different access to certain things, right? Yeah. Just because you've achieved something at a younger age than other people doesn't make you better than them. Oh, sorry, I don't think there's a time to start concept art. I mean, now people are starting concept art earlier and earlier. Yeah just because it's more of a thing that it used to be. But so many people, so many great artists, they started quite late. Yeah. And I think it's just about, okay, of course, when you're younger, you have more time to dedicate to it and you have more like, yeah, more time. And also you can afford it because you're living with parents or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, if you if you, if you can't afford to, to learn it, I don't think there's an issue of studying mm-hmm. later or... Yeah. Yeah, you know? And like, it just, it, it takes, if you, providing you, you have a portfolio that's good enough, it takes just one lucky person, just one lucky yes to start being in industry. Mm. And once you're in there, then it's easy to go around. Yeah, I think that's one thing, because this is kind of in my little notes here, is like, you know, is the idea of work culture and how many hours you should work different between when you're a student and a professional? Because I would say absolutely. Yes, like, that's right. Because once you're in the professional setting, it's amazing how much people's attitudes shift. Because I kind of thought from, you know, the people that I came up with into the industry that we'd all be... Um, what uh anyway we, that we'd all be i don't know continuing to make personal work every week and we'd all keep doing the 14 hour workflow and stuff and um actually it turns out that pretty much everybody i know mellowed out once we got into the industry. yeah because we there's all, no more pressure yeah you, the, you, there you is no, you're right the pressure decreases because you're like well i have the job i have yeah. the security and once you have the job you're kind of always improving because yeah. you're hopefully making work at work i remember there was this this big cloud or kind of pressure is like if i don't get the job after x amount of time yeah well i can't lie to myself indefinitely i, I will have to do something else right? <laughs> so i would have to i don't know taking other other kind of jobs right yeah and it's and and so of course and and also you see again our station on online all these amazing stuff that all the amazing sites are doing which is just the surface of the iceberg right yeah the best work so you just have pressure coming from everywhere and I, it just leads to to this kind of deadline. You have to do it now or never. Yeah. And and I think once you get a job, you just yeah I, the pressure releases. You're more confident. Yeah, I, I think also you're much more confident. You just got the mm. job. Like you're like oh shit, I'm worth the job. Yeah. I think I think also like it's a very linear goal when you're a student. It's I'm going. I want to get into the industry. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing that I find really interesting now is like. You know, like we've said a few times, like I spend lots of time doing personal work, um, but that's because it aligns with like my personal goals mm-hmm. as well. Uh, I think a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people become incredibly stressed out because when they were students, they had this idea that like, oh, I want to be like Jamie Jones or Craig Mullins or whatever. Yeah, and then, then the reality just... has hit them once they've entered the industry of like, you know, you might be 90% of the way to being Craig Mullins, but really that last 10% is so insanely difficult to achieve and it's like a lifetime goal. Um, mm-hmm. And it really does require a lot of work to do that, you know? Um, and I've seen a lot of people just like wind themselves into a total fit because they've realized how difficult that goal is to achieve. And and, and even that maybe that goal doesn't make them happy. Um, you yeah, know, I've yeah. heard so many people say like, I'm happy but I want to be like this uh, and, and that's making me unhappy. And I'm like, well, maybe just change your goals then. You don't have to be doing that. The, the, yeah. There's always the next thing as, as well. You know? There's always a the next yeah. thing in life, yeah. yeah. So and, um, yeah. I, I want to say like about the work culture uh, that, that happens. So like the after you join the job. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I also think I've seen like a lot of people just chill out. Um, Yourself included. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I know you. it's funny because I didn't know Stefan when all of what you talked about happened, right? I, yeah. I didn't know you yet. And so I see you as a very chill dude. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you, you go very hardcore to the gym. I think the gym is, <laughs> is, is, is your hardcore thing. And, and you work also very hard at work. But 
I like the way I see you outside of work is a very chill artist who sometimes does a personal project when you feel like it and when it makes you happy. Yeah. So it's very funny to to see the current Stefan and the the yeah. past stories of Stefan yeah. and, and how people just evolve. You know. I I think I mean, like, right now I uh, I am trying to focus uh, on doing a bit more personal work as well, um, and I think um, it's interesting like to go through that a little bit again of like seeing like how much uh you know what can i do and when can i you know not work anymore and you know stuff like that um but basically when you went for me it was when i started work you i finally got the separation between like personal work and work work as well which um made me enjoy my personal work so much more uh than i ever did mm -hmm. So even though I do less of it and probably that contributes as well because I kind of get to choose when I do it and how I want to do it. But also it's just like my, like I, at work, if I, there is anything that doesn't work out or is difficult to do, I know that I have to push through it because I get paid for it. So that kind of hardcore, like you have to do it and push through it and figure it out mentality, I sometimes try to... I don't always leave it at, at work, but I, I a majority of my working hard energy is spent at work um, because that's when I know that I have to get something done and stuff like that, even though I still focus on enjoying the project that I have. And I have amazing projects that I'm working on. Um, yeah. Um, one thing I want to talk about, you know, I think we can talk about this very quickly is, you know, is burnout an inevitability when you work hard? I mean, I think it's my personal opinion on it is it it's inevitable that it happens at least a few times, but I think you can learn to kind of deal with it essentially and to not burn out. Because I haven't burnt out in a long time now. Mm. And I've still work, I think, quite hard. Yeah. I think I think it depends like almost every time I speak I say it depends, but it do, it does deepen how who you are and how yeah ready to you are to work hard like we were saying before um, did i ask this question already yeah it was similar but i mean i, I think we talked a bit about i don't think we talked about it. no we, oh, we didn't good. talk about burnout, i thought i was just but, yeah. i thought uh, i mean deja I, vu. <laughs> yeah. yeah because i guess it's kind of linked to everything we've talked about like for me it was, i remember i moved to london still looking for a job and that's when i think i probably was working insane amounts every day yeah um my partner was working professionally and i was just home yeah and jobless uh, being like <laughs> shit, I need to work right. I need to get better, and this is when I think it was like two months where I was like just home while my partner was working, and I was like shit, and I I could see me working nonstop all the time, mm. and my mental health getting worse and worse and worse yeah. because it was like peak amount of work, and low self esteem because of no even no one wanting me for a job basically, right. and and yeah, so if you work too long, depending on the context and depending on how you are, it can very get bad. I think. Longer, I would have differently burned out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you want anything to that stuff? Or? Yeah, I think burnout, as Daniel said, sometimes if it happens, you learn how to deal with it eventually. And I think it's just, uh, um, yeah, just try to, um, you know, no matter whether burnout happens or doesn't happen, uh, I think it's important to ask yourself, uh, again, the same questions. Am I enjoying it? Am I happy? If not, why not? You know, am I going to work and I'm not having fun? Okay, can I change something? Uh, can I talk about it with the art director? This and that, you know. And sometimes, like, I don't necessarily experience burnouts, but I do experience sometimes one week. I For one week, I just go to work and I don't feel like I'm having that much fun, but I feel like the subject matter is fun but I just can't really find the right groove, find the right emotions, and it's difficult. And I don't really know what causes it. I cannot say, like, why am I not enjoying it all of a sudden, you know? Like, why was I enjoying it a week mm. ago, and now I'm not enjoying it? Because you're, you're a guy. Yeah, and you're a person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe you wouldn't say that that's, maybe that's not a burnout, but we can say that that's, like, a thing that happens. And then and I just keep going because you just want to get paid and you still want to contribute to the game and there's other things that drive you behind just enjoying it as well yeah. to do it 
But it's important to ask yourself eventually, if it's for a long time, you have to ask yourself, what's the, is there a problem? Should I change something? Yeah. Just to end on like a more positive note, because obviously we've talked about, you know, quite some relatively heavy stuff today. But, um, you know, what was something that you think you learned that helped you balance your life eventually and, you know, helped you kind of overcome this work culture, I guess? For me, I would say like for sure, it's just like working smart and, and not hard, you know, understanding the most effective ways to complete even just like a color study. Um, like rather than if you are there to study color, then trace the image underneath and uh, don't pick the colors. If you're there to study values, then trace and uh, don't value pick. If you're there to do brush economy, then trace it, color pick and test out your brush economy. You know, I think it's important to just really consider and analyze why you're doing what you're doing and in that way whether you work eight hours 14 hours or only two hours those are all much more productive hours that you're taking mm -hmm. um so i think yeah just my my advice if anybody out there is, is struggling with this kind of stuff would be to just do a little bit of introspection and to really think about what you're trying to learn why you're doing it and the best way to do it yeah i like to add as well it might be a very good idea to also just speak with people that are dealing with similar issues right. or in a similar uh, yeah, having a support environment. Structure. Yeah, like, you know, sometimes it's great to just speak with your artists or sometimes it's good to speak about it with other people that do something totally different because mental health and also just work work amount is something every, every job has d yeah. in different ways, but everyone has to deal that, with that. So... And also probably, yeah, if you can look for mentorship or anything that is, or courses or stuff like this. Where People you, can actually guide you. Yeah, yeah. So, something good about uni, for sure, is that you have a guidance. It, it doesn't, it's not good enough for concept art, at least in my situation, but at least you have a guidance and you have some methodology that's learned, that you learn. And friends. Yeah, and oh yeah, friends. That's, I think that's probably the most important stuff. Like, just stop, do something else. Yeah. Uh, and if you stop, you're going to also see... You know, it's like if you started painting for ages and then you do something else, you just close Photoshop, you go somewhere else. And then when you come back, you're going to fix it so quickly. You're going to see everything that's wrong so quickly. Rather than if I just stayed two hours, three hours, eight hours without going out in front of my PC, I wouldn't see those mistakes. And I would just, they, they would be like more of a wall in front of me rather than a, an easy path to follow, which is much more clear when you take time. What was the question again? I, I, oh. I, have, I have an answer for it, but I want to hear the how, question again. Just how so did I, you, what's like a good little tip or trick that you learned to balance your life? Yeah, so I think uh, mostly actually from moving to London and living with Daniel and seeing like how he ha, like make, goes out of his way to invite people and uh, do things like in a social life. Uh, so... I think a good trick is to just the uh, message friends, uh, try to organize something. It's the trick to live with me. Is yeah. that your trick? <laughs> <laughs> that is the trick. That's why I'm with Daniel. Daniel so I have better life. That's why I'm balance. so sad, guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think just like, and uh, just chill out. Take a chill approach, you know. And that's what I uh, try to do. Uh, I still am not perfect at it. Not even good uh, at it. But just if you can sit down and do a drawing and not feel stressed because oh it has to be perfect uh, this and that and just be like okay what do i want to do okay this is how i do it and am i gonna fail am i gonna try all techniques they're not gonna work doesn't matter but in the moment it feels right when you feel rather than being all just locked in you feel very like chill and ex that's that is a good situation good place to be in and then that gives you a little bit more balance even if you do a lot of work also one thing just step by step is just take things step by step uh, and if you don't make it this time you just do it again and you learn what you you couldn't do in your last painting and just apply to it yeah nice um well that was a uh, long and emotional episode, but that'll be the end for today. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed listening. And if you want more, please feel free to like and subscribe, or if you're listening on Spotify, to follow. Uh, we release episodes every two weeks. And if you want any more additional information about the podcast or the event, please be sure to check out our Instagrams linked in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.